Our top story, let us continue. President Biden is to speak soon in Austin, Texas, where he's going to call for major reforms to the Supreme Court, including term limits and a binding code of conduct and ethics. The president will propose a constitutional amendment to limit presidential immunity. That follows the Supreme Court judgment with or decision with Donald Trump. Vice President Kamala Harris is to take those ideas on the campaign trail. The polls show the Supreme Court is becoming less popular with the American public. The court has handed down a few controversial rulings, and some of the justices have had personal scandals. Hofstra University law professor James Sample is with me. I wonder, Professor, you know, will the Supreme Court justices themselves even care? about that. Maybe the Chief Justice because of his legacy of the Roberts Court. But the rest of them, will they even care what people think? Well, whether or not they care what people think, I think, Richard, uh, these are some common sense proposals. If you think about the three proposals that you just outlined, I mean, two of them are common sense. The idea that justices shouldn't be making their own recusal decisions in their own cases without any review by anyone else. That's common sense that, they, that there should be some objective mechanism. And it was just six weeks ago that we had a country right. in which no one was above the law and no one was immune. So a constitutional amendment is really not radical at all. It's just going back to the way things were for 240 years. The staggered term limits idea is a more significant proposal. And there are arguments for and against. But I think that regardless of what the justices think, I think that what President Biden and Vice President Harris are doing here, Richard, is that they are teeing this up as a way of elevating the Supreme Court right. as an issue over the next hundred days. So how do they answer the point that the Republicans say, which, oh, you were very happy when the court was handing down decisions that you liked. Go back to the decisions of you know, the Warren Court and all of that. Oh, you were very happy with a lot of those uh, decisions of the of the more liberal era. Now you don't like it. It's a good question, Richard. And I think that the answer to that question is we don't know who the president will be in eight years from now, but that president will get two appointments to the Supreme Court. And the president 12 years from now would get two appointments to the Supreme Court. The idea here is that it's true that there is displeasure on the left with the current Supreme Court and that there have been periods in American history when there was displeasure on the right with the Supreme Court. But the idea here is prospective in focus in the sense that we, regardless of mm. who you expect will be in charge, you should want a Supreme Court that's focused on law more than politics. I read the immunity uh, judgment or decision, and I can sort of see where they came from on that on the grounds of where it is a constitutional issue that the president enjoys immunity. But how they got to this idea of official acts immunity, I mean, it does beg a belief. It, it, I mean, the idea at oral argument uh, that the justices took seriously and then wrote an opinion which takes seriously, as the dissenters point out, that a president could order SEAL Team 6 to commit a homicide of his or her political opponent the idea that that's American or even small d democratic in any sense of the term, that's anathema to the rule of law. And so, well, there's never been a question that there is a category of activity that is official action that a president, decisions that a president can't be held criminally accountable for. One way of thinking about this is that Richard Nixon read that decision from the heavens yeah. and, and regretted that he was born in the wrong era. I'm grateful to you, sir. Um, uh, the constitutional amendment stands little chance of getting much further than a constitutional amendment uh, in name only. But there we go. We'll talk about it if and when it happens. I'm grateful. Thank you.